In this section, we're going to look at loans with compound interest. Compound interest calculates interest on the principal, or the loan amount, plus any interest that has already accumulated. One example of where you'll see compound interest is in credit cards. As long as there is an outstanding balance, the interest owed is calculated on the entire balance, including any interest that was added to the balance in previous months. Again, for this section, the formulas should look very familiar. They're pretty much the same as the ones for the savings with compound interest. If you have a loan with a principal amount P at an interest rate I per compounding period, then after N compounding periods, if you make no payments on the loan, the amount that will be owed is equal to P times 1 plus I to the N. And this is exactly the same as the compound interest formula for savings. And then here we have the other version of the formula. In this case, we have the nominal annual interest rate R and M compounding periods per year. So let's take a look at an example with credit card interest. Suppose that you owe $1,000 on your credit card. The company charges 1.5% interest per month and you just let the balance ride. How much interest do you pay in the first year? We're going to use the first version of the compound interest formula. A is equal to P times 1 plus I to the N to figure out how much you owe on the credit card after one year. So in this case, your I is your uh, monthly interest rate, which is 1.5%. So I'll put a couple of zeros out front here because I want to convert this to decimal form. So I move my decimal place two places to the left. That gives me 0 0.015 as my interest rate. N is the number of compounding periods and it's compounded every month and you keep your balance on there for one year so N is going to be equal to 12. Then the amount you owe at the end of the year is going to be, well, we've got a principal that we borrowed of $1,000. So A is $1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.015 to the power of 12. So if I put that in my calculator, that's going to give me $1,195.62. So that's the total balance on the credit card after one year. Now if I want to find the interest that we pay, the total amount is equal to the principal that we started out with plus the interest that accrues during the year. So if I want to find the interest, I'm going to subtract P from both of the sides of this equation. So A minus P is equal to I. So my interest is equal to the amount I owe minus the initial balance P and that is $1,195.62 minus $1,000. So the interest is $195.62. And this is 19.562% of your initial balance on the credit card. So let's talk about some terminology for loan rates. These ideas should also be familiar. A nominal rate is any stated rate of interest for a specified length of time. Such a rate does not indicate or take into account whether or how often interest is compounded. So you can have the same nominal rate, but have different compounding periods. The effective rate takes into account compounding, and it is the rate of simple interest that would realize exactly as much interest over the same period of time. So at the end of that example, the 19.562% is the effective rate of your credit card interest. When we look at that per year, that's called the effective annual rate, which is what we did in the example. And the annual percentage rate is the number of compounding periods per year 
times the nominal rate of interest per compounding period. That's called the APR and is given by M times I. And you'll often see the APR when you're looking at uh, credit card offers. So let's do one last example looking at credit card interest. So suppose you've got the same credit card, you owe $1,000 and the company charges 1.5% interest per month. Now I know what is the annual percentage rate? So we said that APR is equal to M times I. M is the number of compounding periods per year and the interest is compounded monthly so that's going to be 12. I is the interest rate which is 1.5 percent in this case I'm just going to leave it in percent form because I want to get a percent back out when I multiply these together so my APR is 12 times 1.5 percent and that is 18 percent so that's the APR and we saw that the effective annual rate was 19.562%, which is a little bit higher than the APR. So things you should know for this section, you should be able to calculate compound interest given the principal, nominal annual rate, and the compounding period. And you should know that compound interest is paid on both the principal and the accrued interest on the loan.